havoc in the Los Angeles City Council. U.S. Senator Kirsten Sinema leaves the Democratic Party, and FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried is arrested for fraud. That and more on this week's headlines. Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Los Angeles new mayor Karen Bass was sworn in by Vice President Kamala Harris. And in her first act as mayor, she declared a state of emergency on the city's homeless crisis. To which Kamala Harris probably said, Why don't you just lock them all up? <laughs> LA has been trying to tackle the homeless problem for years without much success. After raising sales taxes and spending over a billion dollars trying to solve the issue, the number of homeless people in the city has continued to grow, which shows LA is the perfect city to tackle this problem, since the city itself acts like it's homeless. They beg for money, and residents are afraid to give it to them since they don't trust how they're going to spend it. The only difference is the LA City Council doesn't ask, they just take it. A big issue for rising homelessness is the housing crisis, which is driven partly by hedge funds outbidding traditional home buyers to purchase single-family homes in order to convert them into rentals. Hedge funds spend tens of billions of dollars buying tens of thousands of homes each and every month. They're scooping up all the properties they can and treating the housing market like a game of Monopoly. This is causing housing prices to go up and making rent less affordable. But U.S. Senator from Oregon Jeff Merkley is hoping to do something about this. He introduced the End Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act a bill that would try to limit this practice by charging $20,000 for each home over 100 homes the corporation owns. That fine is a fraction of what they're already paying to buy and renovate each house. They won't bat an eye at that. And they'd probably just try to offset the cost by charging even more for rent. But at least it's something, I guess. Plus, it means we may soon get to see Republicans and Democrats come together for a change. Join forces and shoot this bill down to make their donors happy. Isn't bipartisanship beautiful? Before long, the middle and lower class won't own anything, and the A in USA is going to stand for Airbnb. But enough about the homeless crisis in Los Angeles. Let's talk about something more lighthearted. Racism. In October, leaked audio from last year was released that recorded three LA City Council members and the Labor Federation chief making racist remarks about a white colleague's adopted black son. Labor Federation chief and one city council member, Nuri Martinez, resigned. However, the other two council members, Gil Cedillo and Kevin DeLeon, refused to step down despite widespread calls to do so. Cedillo's term ended this week, and he said he wanted to finish his time in office because he cared deeply about his $225,000 a year salary and pension. Oops, I meant constituents. That's what he cares about. However, De Leon attempted to just return to work like nothing had happened. This caused a number of council members to walk out. One tweeted, Some people are ready to excuse De Leon's behavior. I am not. I get it. I've walked out on my job when co-workers have done far less. Like that time Matt said he prefers to eat raw celery sticks plain, with no peanut butter. How can I feel safe at work when I'm sharing space with an obvious psychopath? As if that wasn't enough, later that evening, De Leon got into a physical altercation with a protester in front of children at a holiday event. De Leon claims the protester was the aggressor and laid hands on him first, but video footage is inconclusive. Police are investigating De Leon over it. Hopefully this won't cost him his job. I know how much he'd hate not being able to work for his salary and pension. Oops, I meant constituents. That's what he cares about. More after the break. Welcome back. U.S. scientists announced they created a nuclear fusion reaction that produced a net energy gain. This means it created more energy than what was used to ignite it. If this technology is real, it could eventually create a nearly endless supply of clean energy and end humanity's reliance on fossil fuels. A representative for the scientists said, There, could you please stop scowling at us now, Greta? Speaking of power moves, 
U.S. Senator from Arizona Kirsten Sinema changed her party affiliation from Democrat to Independent. Sinema said she did this because she didn't quite fit in with either party. She's too liberal to be a Republican and too conservative to not be called a despicable villain by left-leaning publications. Gee, I wonder why she doesn't feel welcome as a Democrat. Although Sinema is no longer a Democrat, she said she would keep voting the same way she had been for the last four years. And with the Democrats gaining a slight lead in the Senate, she said this likely won't be a seismic shift. I don't anticipate that anything will change about the Senate structure. I intend to show up to work, do the same work that I always do. I just intend to show up to work as an independent. She expects nothing to change despite continuing to show up to work. Wow. She really does understand how the Senate operates. U.S. Senator from West Virginia, Joe Manchin, pictured here looking like the world's oldest little scamp, is another Democrat who's often maligned by his own party for not always agreeing with them. However, Manchin said he has no immediate plans of becoming an independent. He explained, I have no intention of doing anything right now. Whether I do something later, I can't tell you what the future is going to bring. He has no intention of doing anything and has no long-term plan. Wow. Like Cinema, he also really understands how the Senate operates. This guy Senates. That's not me being cynical, it's me being observant. Because this week, Congress negotiated on a spending bill to avoid a government shutdown. And if you're thinking, wait, didn't this just happen like a few months ago? And a few months before that? And a few months before that? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. Considering how Congress is constantly on the verge of financial ruin and always borrowing money, you'd think instead of them all being in their 60s, they were actually all me in my 20s. As if politics wasn't enough of a team sport, now we have senators becoming free agents. I say, why not go all the way with it? Have a senator draft. The Democrats would like to trade Joe Manchin for Mitt Romney. The Republicans agree, but only on the condition Democrats also take Mitch McConnell. No? Okay, well, how about the Libertarian Party? Anyone? Come on, Green Party, I thought you were all about protecting turtles. And after the break, New York will ban guns on private property. Welcome back. A federal appeals court allowed New York to enforce a law, the Concealed Carry Improvement Act, that would ban gun owners from carrying firearms on private property without the property owner's consent. Which means all you armed robbers will have to take your guns out of the store if they ask you to. Otherwise, you'll be breaking the law. This appeal was over a lower court blocking the law as it violated a Supreme Court decision from June that expanded gun rights and led to several gun control laws being struck down. This all boils down to a debate over public safety and constitutional rights. Some people don't feel comfortable with others carrying guns, and some people don't feel comfortable not carrying a gun. As someone who lives in New York City, I get that. Some worry that this would ultimately lead to other constitutional rights being restricted on private property. Personally, I'd be okay with that, only if it's freedom of speech being suspended at movie theaters. I don't care what the Bill of Rights says, shut up when the movie's playing. Speaking of people losing their freedom, FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried was arrested for committing what authorities are calling one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. He's facing up to 115 years in prison and is being held without bail in the Bahamas. This is despite his legal team offering $250,000 for him to be released because he was depressed and wanted to maintain his vegan diet. Yep, Bankman Freed thinks he should go free because he's a depressed vegan. Which is redundant, by the way. Saying someone is a depressed vegan is like calling someone an annoying bagpiper. The adjective is not necessary. Bankman Freed is facing eight charges, including fraud, money laundering, and using customer funds to make illegal political donations to both Democrat and Republican campaigns. Again, isn't bipartisanship beautiful? If you don't know, FTX was a massive cryptocurrency exchange and hedge fund that collapsed last month, losing $51 billion in collateral. This caused more than a million people using FTX to lose everything. Bankman Freed claimed he wasn't aware of any issues before the collapse, which is kind of hard to believe considering he and other FTX staff had a group chat titled Wire Fraud. This would be like a serial killer claiming he's innocent, despite having an advice column called how to get blood stains out of a crawl space. 
This is less believable than Jennifer Lawrence saying she was the first woman to lead an action movie. I mean, what about Alien? Are you saying that was just a rom-com about a single woman learning the joys of motherhood? Bankman Freed is also being accused of using FTX and his trading firm, Alameda, as a money laundering scam to buy several properties, including over $250 million worth of property in the Bahamas, where he was arrested. Again with these hedge funds buying properties. That's the reason I can't afford a mansion in the Bahamas. It has nothing to do with the fact that I majored in classical music composition. It's all these corrupt billionaires. Bankman Freed is being sued by investors, as well as the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. He's also taking down some major names with him, as FTX had several celebrity endorsers who are also being sued. These include Tom Brady, Shaquille O'Neal, and Larry David. Yes, that Larry David. Are we sure this is real life and not just an episode for next season of Curb Your Enthusiasm? Before his arrest, Bankman Freed was supposed to testify before the Senate over the collapse of his company, but he refused. However, getting information from him about what happened won't be hard since he gave several interviews after FTX went bankrupt, where he incriminated himself multiple times. Here's one he gave just before being arrested. That clicking noise is him playing video games while speaking, something he was known to do in many of his interviews. And like, I just should have dug into it. And like, yeah. But you knew that there was a massive shitty. negative balance at one point in time on some type of stub account, which was not reflected on the borrow lend book at that point in time. Either, I became, which is oh, I became fully aware of that, like in the last, uh, you know, a uh, couple months. Like that was. So in the last uh, couple of months, you knew that. Okay. So in the last couple of months, you knew that. And at that point in time, if they have a massive negative balance across that that's not reflected in the borrow lend book, how is that different from theft? I can't tell if it's ironic or appropriate he was distracted gaming when he made this blunder, because he just played himself. I wonder if he's a fan of our new gaming channel, Gamers Unbeaten. Link is below. The only way this guy could come across like any more of a maniac is if he ate his celery sticks dry. Ugh, I can't work like this. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.